we're not allowed to have commercials on cable access and there we go just about right well pretty close and uh I know you you admire my smooth on the air technique here, my persona. Except I'm having a hard time find, getting it. Okay, go ahead and bring it up. Going back to a very popular, uh, nationally known uh, comic, uh, but also social commentary uh, uh, individual. Uh, you know, HBO specials, Comedy Central specials, you name it, Patrice O'Neill, patriceoneill.com. You got cut off. You were making the point about the hillbillies trying to stay out of the system. You know, to black folks, the way the media pushes it is, you know, anybody who lives in the country is basically a racist that wants to, you know, get you. And then you were saying, Alex, am I right that Waco really woke you up? And to a certain extent, that was the real trigger. So uh, we were talking about that during the break. Please continue. Yeah, I was just going to say that, that, that more more black people should be into this into this uh, globalization game, the, you know, the idea of it, but it's whatever the news does in this country, it's to separate. If you look at history, anybody that tried to bring uh, black and white people together got killed. <laughs> you know, no one, anybody who... As soon as Malcolm X stopped saying Whitey's the devil, as soon as, boom! As soon as he thought, whoa, wait, maybe I'm wrong, get your hand on my pocket, he got killed. And, uh, you know, Martin Luther King got killed. Same deal. JFK... But black people love JFK. Well, he was for real. He, he got killed. Jesus, <laughs> Gandhi, anybody who tries to bring people together for the right reasons, they get off, man. And and well, they're always bringing folks together against the corrupt elite. And 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 they get offed. So the thing is, when you keep when you keep me thinking, what do I care about having a gun? I can't have one. I got a I got a conviction, so I can't have a gun anyway legally. So if it, it, you know. To, to, to the average black person in the street. And that's why they want to get everybody into the system. Well, it's like this black guy up in uh, Long Island. 25 MS-13s are rushing his house, and we're going to kill your kids. He shoots the gun in the ground. And they were legal. His guns were legal. And they arrested him. And the cops said, well, you could have killed him. It's like something out of Gran Torino. But you couldn't shoot the gun in the ground to protect yourself. They shot, he shot in the air, and they called it whatever they called it. Man, this is why I tell a lot of people, like a lot of people do have this thing about the police where they go, oh, you know, we have rights. The, the, the people, man, police have things that they can do to just take your... Look, disorderly conduct is, it ends all your ideas that you think you have rights. If, if a cop says move and you go, no, I have the right to be here, you, disorderly. Be, that's basically destroys... Or everything. failure to follow an order. Failure to follow. So, so what's the next thing? Come to your house, knock, knock, I want you to go mow my yard. And well, you say no, you're... You're going to get... Exactly. A lot of police are stopped. But this is what... The problem is, one of the problems, I fly a lot. You fly a lot. The people are supposed to be... Uh, our, our elite, who the people who know how to have power over another person, meaning this... You have a you have a physical presence. I have a physical presence. So you know what it's like to be respected just because you exist. A lot of people who have power don't know, had never knew what it was like to be respected just because they exist. So if you get a lot of weak people who are now put into powerful positions, they, they're really, really corrupted by that. Well, that's what I found. A lot of people who innately are powerful are embarrassed of exercising power but but these little nobody thugs, they are just loving it because they're weak. And that's what the system is made up of, is all these petty people, that it's a new class. They're above us. I flew with Jesse Ventura uh, and at the Atlanta airport. He's got a hip replacement. Mm -hmm. And I watched uh, Ventura and, 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 and mainly old folks that have hip replacements right. being searched. And, 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 and Ventura said to me, that's why he wants to leave this country, period, because he said... It's the act of domination and humiliation every time he flies, the pat down, putting their hands on him. And I was watching him do it to women. And, and, you know, that's your personal space. It has nothing to do with terrorism. And it's dog training. They are training us to have somebody in our space. And they're always, and now they got the naked body scanners. And the, and the, and the thing about the naked body scanners, I, look, I, I cause problems when I go to the airport. I always go to the airport three hours or four hours before I have to fly just so I can see what rights I supposed to have. So LA was the first time I've seen the X-ray machines. You can say no to the X-ray machines. But now they say, but they admit they're phasing it in to make you. Well, here's what they do. They, they don't just say yet yeah, and make you now, 
But what they do is they make life so miserable if you don't that you think about doing it. Now, I said, look, I don't want to take, I don't take anything off that I don't have to. You have to take your shoes off. You have to take your, your coat off. I don't take anything. Which is another act of submission. Submission. I don't take my jewelry off. and My hat. You can keep your hat on if you want to. You can keep on your belt if you need, if you want. Okay. Uh, we're going to open up the phone lines now. There's two more parts to that. And, you know, I want to have some two-way interaction on this cable show. So you'll have to go to the Alex Jones channel on, on YouTube to watch the other two parts of that. And uh, let's see, we've got, I've got another video that I can show if we don't get any calls right away. But uh, anyway, let's put it this way. There's, he, he covered an awful lot. And uh, it's, he kind of discussed the way you wake up as you get more knowledge you know some people just began to think about this in the last year some people began to think about this in the last few years some people started with 9-11 that's the wake-up call now 9-11 it wasn't the start of all this 9-11 was just one of those times when they got so outrageous in their arrogance about what they could do and get away with it that you know they, they went just far enough that a lot of people finally woke up and said, hey, you know, maybe things aren't the way they tell us all the time, and maybe they're just doing this to us for greed purposes. Yeah, and then how about that comment about Malcolm X and MLK? Um, as soon as they stopped talking in terms of a racial conflict or a racial problem, blacks versus whites, as soon as they started realizing that it was really the haves against the have-nots, an economic greed issue, both of them got offed. And that's, you know, that's not a coincidence. That's really what happened. Um, and I like that remark about the, you know, no matter what happens, you, you think your rights should trump, you know, like the right of free speech should trump the closing time of a park or as far as, you know, the level of laws. Well, the disorderly conduct, I, I've had that happen before. You know, I had an argument with an officer about, you know, some stuff that was going on at my place. And and I kept saying, you know, well, what law did I break? What law did I break? And he finally pulled out his little book and flipped to the disorderly conduct thing. And they had A through L items, A, B, C, D, E, F, D, all the way through L, of the different categories that he could lump into the thing called disorderly conduct. And, you know, they're absolutely right. And what do these Occupy protesters believe? Are they just fresh out of the box? Do they think that cops are on your side? You know, I'll tell you something. I've been protesting now. I'm a 60-year-old man. And it started back when my parents took me to the um, Woolworths counters. You know, so we'd sit there and occupy their cafeteria counters, sipping one cup of coffee all day long so that, you know, nobody would get to use the counter because they wouldn't serve black people. That's how I started my life. And then protesting the Vietnam War and every skirmish that we've had since. <clears throat> and I'll tell you something. The only time you see violence is when the cops start it. Okay? Now, I tell you a little story about Sheriff Jim Holtzman, who was Sheriff of Multnomah County uh, back in the 60s, the late 60s. My dad was a political science professor at Portland Community College and, a, a, for some strange reason, a friend of Jim Holtzman. Jim Holtzman was a strange bird. When he took over Multnomah County, he locked up all the bugging devices that had been used without any restraint, and he locked up, he disbanded the riot control squad that had machine guns. Of course, since then, it's been reinstated even bigger time, but he had the right idea. And one day, the Black Panthers scheduled a talk at the Portland Community Common or Portland Community College Commons out there at Mount Sylvania. And uh, there were a lot of people that were so worried, oh the Black Panthers are coming, the Black and this is right when they were marching with guns, you know, actual marching with guns like you'd never see now. Uh, but anyway, they asked Sheriff Holt my dad asked Sheriff Holtzman, what are you going to do? And Holtzman's answer was, well, it depends on what you want. Do you want to have violence and blood and, and busted heads? I'll send a whole squad of cops. 
But if you want to have just a talk by the Black Panthers in a peaceful group, peaceful meeting, I won't send anybody. Just the regular camp, one campus cop is all that was needed. And guess what? In the t turbulent times that happened uh, in the 60s, the, uh, I know there's a phone call. Okay, anyway, they're distracting me when I'm talking. Uh, they, uh, in, in the 60s, when the cops were busting heads over the 1968 Democratic Convention, look back into YouTube. There are all kinds of videos on that. I've even got some still black and whites from the 70, 71 at a Portland State protest where a cop with a baton this long was just wailing on this 21-year-old woman. Um, anyway, I, I hear we got a phone call, so the, the point is, if you want violence, send the cops. If you don't want violence, don't send the cops. So what did you expect when you see cops uh, surrounding a protest group? The cops are there for violence purposes and nothing else. Don't let, the, don't any, let anybody say that it's for safety because everybody was perfectly safe until the cops got there. And the only damage and the only, not, I'm not talking about vandalism, I'm saying the only personal body damage that occurred at those protests occurred because the cops did it. Make no mistake about that. Don't glorify the cops and how well they restrained themselves because it's like saying, oh, look how well that guy with the sniper rifle restrained himself. For a whole 40 seconds, he didn't shoot. Then he went, bang! But boy, that was a lot of restraint because he held his trigger still for a while. Okay? Anyway, go ahead. I'll take the caller now that I've got it out. Oh, hey there. How are you doing tonight? Pretty good. Good. Hey, I was just calling in. I, I saw you were up broadcasting the, the Alex Jones interview with uh, Patrice O'Neill, and I was just calling in to say kudos, good job getting the word out. Uh, yeah, he died at age 41. I'm not even sure what he died from. Uh, diabetes, actually. Oh, diabetes. Okay. High fructose corn syrup and everything. Yeah, I'm sick of those high fructose corn syrup commercials where they say corn syrup or... High or, or regular syrup, there's no difference. The body doesn't know the difference, and that's a lie. It's, it's, it, it doesn't metabolize very well, that's for sure. Absolutely, and diabetics have a real problem with high fructose corn syrup, and over 60 million people are diabetics. Now, that's not a 9-11 issue, but this just shows you the type of lying and corruption that we accept nowadays. Well, i got to tell you, uh, when I converted over, I mean, uh, after my, I'm a veteran and stuff, I was in the military and the Navy, and uh, it took. it was a hard thing for me to to convince myself that the, the government had nefarious motives it was very <laughs> difficult to uh, kind of come to that conclusion but i think the one thing that really set me off about 9-11 truth was the the youtube video of rumsfeld coming out on uh september 10th 2001 and saying oh there's 2.2 trillion dollars missing from our budget and then like the very next day something hits the pentagon in the accounting office you right know? where all that information might have been figured out well, all the accountants, all the computer records, all that, and then since, right. since the the decade since, we haven't heard a a, peep. a word. <laughs> right. In fact, it had kind of established the routine for take it and run, and don't talk about it later. Yeah, I mean, and I've I've actually uh, I've brought a bunch of my friends and family over, kind of to my way of thinking, just from that. You, you just go on YouTube and play clip in Donald Rumsfeld, and and it's right there. Yeah, and, it, and so it's like, duh. And know? Rumsfeld even made those slips later, talking about the the plane that hit the Pentagon, and he called it a missile. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I have no idea whether it's a plane or a missile, but the point is, nothing should have hit the Pentagon. <laughs> well, that's a lot of what happens in nine eleven truth stuff, as everybody's arguing about. Oh, this did it, and that did it. Yeah, I'm not going to fall for that. that way. I, I just won't fall for that. The, I mean, it's good enough that nothing should have happened. You know, exactly. And, and, that, in fact, my next show where you're talking about it, I'm going to make a, you know, like a 10 point kind of talk about why 9-11 was an inside job and so, some of the more outrageous reasons. We've got hundreds of things we could mention, but, mm -hmm. you know, just going to touch on the main ones so that it's the last show of the season. If you have any ideas, let me know. Yeah, I will. And I'll, and I'll just let you know that it looks like Occupy Portland has taken over the, uh, the uh, park blocks over here on uh, 9th and Salmon. Oh. They're playing guitars and. Well, you know, I, I think they set themselves up by, you know, having to.